Hey, Two Cities family, Pastor Kyle here. We are back in our uh, Nehemiah study, looking today at chapter 5, verse 10. And if you'll just remember, in chapter 4, what we saw was uh, we saw external opposition. Now in chapter 5, we're seeing internal opposition. We're seeing the people of God deal with issues in their own community. And what happens is, and this is important to know, that as the mission was going forward, the mission didn't necessarily create problems as much as it ends up revealing problems. And that's what ends up happening, right, in our life. C.S. Lewis famously said, if you go down into the basement and you hit the lights and you see a bunch of rats, the light did not create the problem. The light only exposed the rats that were already there. And so what we're doing is we are looking at how to deal uh, with sin when it is exposed in a community. And, and today I want us to look at verse 10. We saw that Nehemiah heard this outcry from the people about injustice they were experiencing. We saw how the church uh, was not helping, but actually we saw in verses 7, 8, and 9, we're actually making things worse and we're partaking in sinful patterns. Uh, but I want you to see what happens in verse 10. Things change in verse 10. Here's what it says. Verse 10 says this, Moreover, I and my brothers and my servants are lending them money and grain. Let us abandon this exacting of interest. Now this is what's amazing and humbling and just so honest about the Bible. What we see in verse 10 is that Nehemiah was engaging in the same sinful practices that everybody else was. He actually comes to a place, he's angry, and he's angry at other people's sins, but he's also angry at his own sin, and that's honestly what happens a lot of times, right? We end up being angry at other people's sins because we see those same sins in our own life. And what we see here is that Nehemiah, even as a godly leader who did a lot of great things, was taking advantage of people. He was charging them way too much interest. And, and we read stories like this and we go, how could somebody like that, in that type of position, do that type of thing? Well, here's what honestly happens. In society, uh, oftentimes we see leaders, even godly leaders, partake in the same sins as the society does because they tend to be so acceptable. This is why a lot of times people are like, well, how did King David have so many wives? And you know, how, how could someone like that in the Old Testament do that? Well, what happened is back, back in those days, that was so commonplace. I don't know all the sins that will be exposed in the future, sometimes that we'll look back on and go, how could we as a church or as Christians in the 21st century engage in those? But here's what's good. Here's what's uh, encouraging about this. He is confronted. Maybe even in some ways he's caught <laughs> in realizing that he's been doing these sins. And what he does is he says, that's it. I'm going to repent. And I want you to see what he does in verse 11. This is very important. He says this, verse 11. Return to them this very day their fields, their vineyards, their olive orchards, and their houses, and the percentage of money, grain, wine, and oil that you have been exacting from them. And then he goes on to say this. Then they said, we will restore these and require nothing from them. We will do as you say. And this is, I just want to take a moment to talk about this because I think this is a really important concept. It's a humbling concept. It's that part of repentance is also restoration or part of repentance is also making recompense. And what that means is sometimes if you've lied about something or somebody, uh, say, you, say you've been gossiping about somebody, you need to go and you need to repent that person and you need to um, ask for their forgiveness. And then you need to go to the people that you gossip to and say, you know what? That was wrong. That was not true. Here is the truth about that person. And I was saying that to make them look bad. And I want to make things right. That's what it means to be committed. It might mean, hey, I stole something. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm not just going to give it back. I'm going to give it back and maybe I'm also going to give some money. This is why, it, you know, there's a famous story in the Old Testament where Samuel, a prophet, confronts David, a king. And he tells this story about a man who steals a goat and, uh, or steals a lamb. And David, when he hears this story, he says he needs to pay him back fourfold. Well, why does he say that? It's the idea of making recompense. It's the idea of restoring things. And that's part of what repentance will look like in your life. And I don't know in every area, but it will look like not just saying you're sorry, but also saying, how can I make things right in this situation? And then finally, I want you to see one more thing. Verse um, 12 says this. They said, or verse 13 said, I also shook out the fold of my garment and said, so may God shake out every man from his house and from his labor who does not keep this promise. Then look what it says for uh, the end of the verse. So may he be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, amen. 
and praise the Lord, and the people did as they had promised. So what does repentance look like? Well, we have to start with ourselves, that's what Nehemiah does. He goes, he repents, not only that, but he also restores and makes recompense. Uh, and then finally, he makes promises about what he's gonna do in the future. And, and I think that's a huge part. If you wanna see a marriage be reconciled, if you wanna see you know fathers and families be reconciled, sometimes what it's like is sometimes a dad needs to go to his kids and say, or a mom needs to go to her kids and say, I repent. I wasn't a great mom or I haven't been a great dad, and I would like to make up for that the best that I can, and I'd like to make some promises about who I hope to be by the grace of God going forward. I'm telling you, a community of people committed to genuine repentance and restoration while also being committed to making promises about the future, that is a, that is a community that we all desire to be a part of. So let's take our next step in doing those things, and let me pray for us together. Pray with me. Um, Lord, I just pray right now that we would be a kind of community that when we are confronted with sin or whenever we, um, someone catches us and says, you've been doing this wrong, whatever the language we want to use, Lord, that we would, we would take that moment and we would be so willing to repent. It would be our hearts, the reflex of our heart is one of repentance. And also, Lord, just let us know if there's anything that we need to restore, if there's anything that we need to go back and talk about again. Uh, if there's anything that we need to make right, let us do that. Lord, and let us be people that aren't afraid to make promises about the type of people we hope to be by the grace of God. We ask this in your name. Amen.